Mission Karm Yogi is a national program for civil services capacity building aimed to reform Indian bureaucracy. Envisaged by our Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the mission is launched with a view to create a highly efficient civil service that will contribute more towards the development of the country. The institutional framework for the mission has been designed by the Department of Personal and Training under the guidance of Honorable Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh. In India, there are 20 million bureaucrats touching the lives of the citizens on a day-to-day -day basis. Civil servants play one of the most crucial roles in formulating the public policy as well as their execution. They are the backbone of the country. A lot of expectations of the nation are attached with the performance of these officials who come from different background, environment, capabilities and discharge diversified duties assigned to them. It was felt that the existing framework in which the civil servants are trained lacked efficiency orientations. In course of time, some changes were brought in the training policies of civil servants, but these were in silos. Mission Karam Yogi, on the other hand, was envisaged to transform the HR management system for civil servants from rule-based to role-based, in totality and in developing suitable competency. This has led to the development of a competency-based human resource in governance for civil servants. Competencies have been defined in many ways. However, the most practical and an easy way to understand is that competencies are those underlying characteristics of an employee which can result in effective and superior performance in a job or a role. The new competency-based governance model and a mission Karm Yogi provides an opportunity for central training institute like ours to design competency-based training for the Indian civil service. There are 30 competencies which have been categorized in the five broad areas. They are ethos, ethics, equity, efficiency, and productivity. Each competency has a definition and its proficiency level, and each proficiency level has behavioral indicators which are objective measurable and are required for various positions in the ministries and departments. The primary objective of the competency-based training is to stimulate the inner strength and capabilities and also to improve the functional competencies of individual officers. Under the second competency, Ethics, today we will talk about integrity. Integrity is an important characteristic that defines a human being inhabiting in a society. It is a vital concept in government and governance as well. Integrity means that a professional exercises his or her task adequately, carefully and responsibly, taking into account all relevant interests. The civil services defines integrity as consistent behavior in an open, fair and transparent manner, honoring one's commitment and working to uphold the public service values. A close analysis reveals that there is a characteristic relationship between integrity and morals. In other words, what is right and wrong, good or bad. Some scholars also see integrity as an open reflection on morals. But why the concept of integrity is attached with the civil service? Civil servants are provided with immense powers and responsibilities towards society. Their impartiality and honesty is important for social good and development. A civil servant that holds integrity in high standard, acts ethically, follows the rules and regulations, and is trustworthy. He or she are themselves guided by public interest in conflicting situations and encourage others to consistently follow public service values. They treat people impartially, regardless of political, social, demographic, geographic, circumstances or bias. They have courage and conviction to make and stand by the right decisions, even at significant personal cost. They are unafraid to challenge powerful and influential people and hold them accountable to make the right decisions. There is no denying the fact that the actions of a civil servant have a direct bearing on the community and therefore they should have integrity that prevents them from taking wrong decisions which could harm the society. Not just that, a civil servant has to be a role model who leads by example by maintaining high standards of professionalism and impartiality. They have to take accountability for their own action 
and create a culture that encourages open, honest and ethical behavior. They must know how to hold people accountable to their own action and reward those who demonstrate integrity. Civil servants more or less have an important role to play in the development and achievement of goals in terms of social, economic, political, justice, equality of status and opportunity in society. Phenomena such as bribery, patronage, favoritism, private time misbehavior, fraud, intimidation and discrimination are therefore considered as violation of integrity. A civil servant is expected to avoid these at all circumstances. Integrity is critical in civil service to ensure good governance that is conducive for civil servants to perform their duties with honesty and allow better administration. What is, however, required at all time is to ensure that integrity is maintained through constant training and proper vigilance. This was all about integrity and why it is an important competency of the National Programme for Civil Services Capacity Building. The content is curated with the help of the paper authored by Commodore Nareesh Chabra under the guidance of IIPA faculty, Professor K.K. Pandey. Thank you for watching.